Hello there fellow humans and welcome to another shop review and there was also an update this week but besides a few tanks getting HD upgrades nothing really happened so there isn't really much to talk about there are however a lot of draws now the M60 isn't worth it it's not a real premium tank it doesn't actually have good credit coefficient so there's no point in getting that the Senlac now go home and smoke some more crack yeah, this vehicle is uh, extremely pointless, especially if it is in a draw because it just costs way too much. This is one of those vehicles that you put on the shop for 5k and hope that somebody buys it, but there isn't really any value in this vehicle. There are other light tanks that are better, and there are other tanks that are cheaper, so there is not much going on here that is of value. And there are a couple of other offers, like the 114 SP2, which is an interesting vehicle. Now, it doesn't really have a lot of DPM, 2200, 620 alpha damage. Um, 0.4 accuracy, which is pretty terrible, 7 degrees of gun depression, that's okay, mobility is quite bad, and the armor is 290 on the third, but here's the thing, this vehicle, you put it in the shop for 20k, we can talk about it absolutely, but like this in a crate, nope, absolutely not, so we can just ignore that moving forward, I might play it later, um, just to show the point, but there isn't really much that you want about the 114 SP, and don't try to buy the containers. What's that music, yo? Just new. Oh, right, I forgot. If you have uh, the update, right, check your settings, because if you don't check your settings, they might just reset. Like, my accuracy, for example, just resets. My aiming accuracy just resets every single time. So it's just annoying. Um, let's see, is there anything here? Nope, nope, nope. Resources this time is credits, so we don't do that. We ignore that. And we have the Glorious Hunter, 17.5k. It's a little bit too much for this bundle, in my opinion. However, it is a good bundle, another Barask. It's a very unusual vehicle because it's one of no armor that still does well for bad players because even though it doesn't have any penetration either, but this thing has one unique ability and that is the two shot auto loader. You don't have to get many opportunities to do damage to play well in this vehicle and you can just run around the map. So can definitely recommend this thing. It's not as OP as some people think it is, but it is a pretty good vehicle nonetheless. And the MX-30 is probably the, the only uh, tier 9 medium tank that, that I personally would recommend buying. I mean, the Shy feature also exists, but it has a lot more downsides that make it a lot more specialized. And I would simply just prefer the MX-30. So, decent model, a little bit overpriced. But I'd love to see this for like 12, 12k, 15k maybe. Um, especially because these are locked as well and don't really add any value here and the camels don't add any value in my opinion either. Obviously, the 38,000 gold is completely made up. Um, but two good tanks, nice bundle, but overpriced. So if it's worth it to you, then get it. Now, 250 for this. You can sell them for gold if you want to. They're worth like a 500 gold or something each. Um, but there isn't really any value in here unless you just want to sell them for gold. And even then, I don't know. These two, nope. Just straight up, nope. If a bundle contains the MX CDC, it's already not going to be worth much, basically. And then the T95 E6, I've played that vehicle specifically last week so check out last week's shop review however the times fives are applied to the vehicle it has awesome containers and stuff something useful like premium time um, but the vehicle if you are a good player is a good heavium that works quite well and it's probably the best heavium like pure heavium obviously the chieftain is a little bit more heavy tank than it is heavium um but in terms of you know hunting mediums this is probably the one option but remember it basically doesn't have any armor and then we have the untamed fury here and uh, which is interesting now we got this bundle here at 9.5k see this is this is how a bundle like this should cost you know you got a pretty solid tier rate heavy tank and then you got the super Persian, which uh, has been sucking since i think 2016 so hey 9.5k at least is a solid price for these two and uh, I'm fine with that, but generally don't recommend it. The vehicles aren't really that good. Uh, the T26 is a solid vehicle. This thing, it's fun, but that's about it. Like, you, you don't use this to grind credits. It doesn't have the penetration. It, it's very hard to play, and the Super Pershing is just a vehicle that lags behind massively in terms of performance. This one's still good, but you have the T77. You have the T4E2. There's literally no point to, to pick this up. I mean, hey, if all three will be 10k... It will be a nice collector bundle, but like this, I definitely don't recommend it as well. And uh, just to 
take the cake here. This bundle, which, by the way, includes the M41D, which was given away for free like a year ago. This one is 12,000, and this one is 500 more, which makes this look a lot better than it is compared to this abomination. Because the m 4190 I mean, it's okay, but nothing outstanding that you have to have. This bundle is hilariously terrible. This one's okay. This one's hilariously terrible. Scorpion G... I gotta say, this is a pretty damn good price for a bundle like this. You got all the boosters in here. You get the times fives that are unlocked that you can use to uh, grind a new tech tree. 8.5k for this is a very good deal right here. So I can recommend this Scorpion G if you are looking for a paper tank destroyer. Basically, sum it up. If you're a good player, you want a paper heavy M T95 Scorpion G. Um, that's the two that I would recommend out of the shop. And then if you do want to overpay for the Barask. And the AMX-30. This is a solid enough bundle. And then these are collector items, essentially. That uh, if you want to have more vehicles in the garage. But they aren't really that useful. So with that said, let's now descend to hell. Where, don't forget to open the free containers. Because, you know, 27 free XP boosts just those are pretty useful. I mean, not for me, because I already have like 2,000. But if you are still in the progress of acquiring things in this game, then... These are very useful. Open the free containers. But don't be tricked into then buying the paid ones because that is when you start losing. Remember, unless you gamble with your own money, you can gamble as much as you want. But if you do gamble with your own money, don't gamble. Like, for example, with this vehicle, which is what I'm going to play now. Here we go with the 114 SP2. Now, obviously, it's in crates. So this is a press account. I didn't actually buy it because I don't spend my own money on Blitz anymore because I have better things to spend it on. But basically, that's kind of what this vehicle is as well. Like, there are better things you can spend your money on, especially if it is in crates right now because what you have here is you have a playstyle similar to that of an IS-7 or a VZ-55 with a bigger gun about what you're going to get here so you have to fire less shots you're going to have somewhat of an advantage there so if it does come into the shop for a reasonable price eventually we can talk about it again but for now there isn't really a good way to purchase it obviously because it is in the crate uh but yeah 620 alpha damage you can trade quite well the penetration all that is good enough so you'll be fine obviously the dpm is so low that the uh, gunner armor makes no sense whatsoever so you might want to use calibrated for this vehicle um, but the accuracy is terrible. You want to use the refined gun here. Um, and then the rest of the equipment is going to be pretty straightforward. So, let's see. What can do here? What I can do, I'm just going to peek sideways here. Because here's the thing about Blitz. Eventually, you're gonna, you can side scrape all you want. You can play as well as you want. But eventually, once you start realizing that pretty much every other player is awful, you can just idiot peek and you're going to still win anyway. So, which I find... A beautiful thing to have. I'm just gonna peek around this side. I know there's nobody back there, so I can, I'm gonna be fine. I can just peek this guy. Fire at him. I'm pr protected from the 183 by the house. He doesn't have an angle, which means I can just go around the back again and I'll be completely fine. And the other 183 doesn't have a, a fire. I do have to watch out for the 907 eventually if he does come up the middle, though. He could shoot me for 300 damage. Ooh, I'd be so scared. Um, but let's see what we can do. He's gone now. And uh, choose now. Do I wait for the I-7 to reverse again? He might not. I don't know where the 183 is. So I'm going to sort of set up on the house here. Nope, he's gone away. That's kind of annoying. And he just fired, which means for the next 20 seconds, he's going to do absolutely nothing. We've got three guys up here. they got three guys. So we have an advantage because I'm the fourth. So we're just going to simply drive up here. Um, they can peek me. I don't really care. At this point, um, I got 2,800 hit points. It would be a shame if you... Would never use them. Uh, can't peek the I-7 without peeking the E-100. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the E-100 to dip. And now I can just simply peek the I-7. Probably going to get shot in the ass here, but it doesn't really matter. At this point, because I can shoot the I-7 in the ass. Going to reverse out. 183 can't shoot me, because he's still busy. And, um, yeah, that should now be dealt with. Because the I-7, he can't reverse into me. Uh... And if he doesn't reverse into me, it's just going to get killed by those guys. So, going to be fine. Set up a side scrape here. The, the rare times I'm going to do that. Do 100. I'll be fine. Obviously, these plates here are not going to be uh, allowing you a very good side scrape, right? Because you can just, like, get pinned right in the plate here. Uh, because the angle's outwards. 
Um, I have no idea how the i7 is still in this. I have no idea how the rest of the team hasn't uh, done anything. But that's about World of Tanks Blitz for you. You can do whatever you want. The team's going to do whatever they want, and then you're going to lose. So, yeah, he's obviously just going to reverse now because he knows that all three guys are in front of him. And I don't have the gun depression to actually get down there. And, uh, yeah, that's about that. 3k damage. Uh, the big problem are going to be the 183s because uh, one of them is, I think, very low. He was over there. Um, so I think I'm going to... Yeah, I'm not going to engage here. I'm just going to go around the outside because... Oh, never mind. Slow! Slow as hell. If you peek a corner, be fast. And more importantly, don't have a turret at the rear. Then that's kind of suboptimal. Alright, okay, so the 100 is holding that. I have 800. I can take a shot. He can take a shot. Maybe. If he gets lucky, there's that. And now he's dead. See? Reposition. If you're in a position that's not optimal, just reposition to find a position that's more optimal. Like I did just there. Now I'm gonna go all the way around the map. Even with a slower tank like this one, you don't want to approach from right in front of the enemy ever. Um, and it's gonna work out just fine. Like, just sitting in front of the enemy and shooting them in the face, you're gonna get shot in the face too. Just drive around them. Right? You always want to engage one enemy at a time and one enemy most ideally that isn't facing you so the problem here is obviously 845 i'm spotted i'm probably gonna die now because i did get spotted here i'm just gonna keep wiggling and oh he's up there so he did reposition a little bit and this is the perfect position i'm approaching from here now because the e4 is on one side i'm on the other side you basically can't kill anybody uh, without dying and he just fired, I believe, so there is nothing he can do now. If he points at the E4, I'm going to kill him. If he points at me, the E4 is going to kill him, hopefully. So I'm just going to use HE for safety. And there we go. Problem solved. That is how Wolf Tanks Blitz is played. And that is how the 114 SP2 is played. Hope that helped a little bit. I mean, I, I more reviewed the game than the tank here. But let's be honest. Don't buy the crates. And uh, just think while you play... That's the whole secret to the thing. If you're in front of an enemy, don't be, basically. So, buy a good tank. Buy the Brask, because that thing is excellent at not being right in front of the enemy. That thing is excellent at flanking around and doing damage from the back. Even with a heavy tank like this, you don't want to throw away all your hit points. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one. Goodbye.